Hey guys, today's episode is with Eric Anderson. Eric is a friend of mine and he's also the owner of the Ocean Lab out in Austin, Texas. If you were ever in Austin, you've got to stop by the Ocean Lab. It is so cool. So if you're in biohacking, health, optimization, meditation, um, just honestly, anything personal optimization, you're going to want to stop by the ocean lab. Not only is it beautiful, um, it's so good for you. So, um, what we're going to do in this episode, if you're not watching on YouTube and you want to see inside of it, what it looks like, it's, it's gorgeous. Um, you might want to pop over and see this episode on YouTube. My YouTube channel is youtube.com slash coach Tara Garrison. You can just subscribe and you can get the video version of all podcast episodes there. So if you're not watching me, just a heads up on that. Um, so we're going to, what happens at the beginning the episode, I'm going to go inside and Eric's going to show us around the inside of the ocean lab, um, anywhere from their sensory deprivation tanks, which are huge. I know some people, they think sensory deprivation or float tanks, and they think like stranger things are like these like <laughs> tiny, you know, the tiny little pods that you've seen, but these are really big. You can stand up inside of them. They're gorgeous. It's got music in it that lulls you into, um, a nice meditative state. And if you're not familiar with what this is, what sensory deprivation or float spas are, um, is the water is about the same temperature as your body. So you literally feel like you're floating in space after you adjust for just after a little bit. So the meditation goes super deep. Um, and then also they have some amazing infrared saunas and cold therapy, um, that he's going to educate you on as well. And also just talk to you about the benefits and his personal experience with, um, sensory deprivation tanks, float spas, why he started this and why you might be interested. I know my first time going through one of these, I was like, wow, this is a long time. And now I crave it. So anyway, we'll get more into that as we go in the episode. Um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and jump right into it. Here is Eric Anderson. All right. What's up guys. I am out in front of the ocean lab here in Austin, Texas. So this place is a float spa. They have the nice big float tanks. I'm going to go inside. I'm going to interview the owner, Eric, and he's going to show you guys what the float tanks look like. Um, they also have ice baths out back, um, an infrared sauna and a regular sauna. Um, so we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you what it's all about. All right, I've got Eric. What's good, y'all? Anderson, the owner. You, you ready to show us around this place? I would love nothing more. Let's do All it. All right, let's tour. We're gonna go see some float spas and some other things. Where shall we start? I mean, we gotta start with the, the lobby here, or as we affectionately call it, the living room. Gotta meet Jerry. Jerry's our disco shark. <laughs> he keeps us safe. Uh, he actually owns the place. Uh, oh, you know. nice to meet you, Jerry. So this is, just make sure you pay homage on your way in. But uh, Jerry sort of represents a, uh, you know, don't take yourself seriously kind of approach that we embody here at the Ocean Lab. It's not too often you see a disco ball shark. Um, so, you know, we try to be a giant pattern interrupt. And I think Jerry is a, a great way of signifying that. <laughs> yes, he is. But let's move on to the meat and, and potatoes. He has, and he has the Ocean Lab shorts, which oh, you can purchase here in the lobby. Gotta have the Ocean Lab. <laughs> <laughs> swim trunks on it's essential so most of the attention we get is for our float cabins but we are also a sauna studio the combination of sauna and float is my favorite thing ever so i'm just thrilled that there are other people that love them as much as i do uh, we have two full spectrum infrared saunas from sunlighten if you're not familiar with sunlighten they're one of the two largest brands in the sauna game along with clear light um, full spectrum infrared sauna means you're hitting all three of the infrared wavelengths, far, mid, and near, which allows for maximum detox and maximum benefit. So the private ones are fun and all, but this is our giant one of a kind cedar infrared sauna. All the cedar is from Dripping Springs, which is a little town about 20 minutes west of Austin. And my buddy Fred hand picked out and hand cut every piece of wood you see oh, here. So, cool. so until someone tells me otherwise, this is the largest infrared sauna in the world. Oof. And not only does it smell great, but it also it makes you sweat like crazy. That is freaking awesome with local wood. With local wood. That's some Who doesn't care. love local Texas wood? Some love and care. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, Right. usually suggest people come sauna for like 20 or 30 minutes before they go start their float journey. Uh, it can be a little jarring going from, you know, our outside world where there's every stimuli under the planet to nothing. So the sauna serves as a nice, half, nice halfway house. But if you've never seen a float cabin before, here you go. We have the largest ones on the market. They're 
bigger than a California king size bed, eight feet tall. Uh, one of the biggest issues we hear from people or apprehensions we hear around floating is that they're worried they're going to feel claustrophobic or confined or that they're, you know, like in this box. And while technically you could call this a box, it's a very tall box, uh, certainly larger than some of the other float devices on the market. And what's cool about these is you can also do couples floats. So, Super cool. uh, you know, floating by yourself is an insane experience and something everyone should try. I feel the same way about the couples float. Just being in there with someone else, it's super intimate but non-sexual. That makes sense. Yeah, um, cool. And then this is the little pillow if you're worried about your cut. head. And yes, um, we provide these lovely neck halos. Um, in terms of floating, generally the problem people have is they have too much tension up in their upper back and shoulder, re shoulder region because we spend all day driving or texting or on our laptops or whatever. So really like getting in there and tilting your head back is one of the most freeing feelings that floating provides. Um, and having the neck pillow there can just help with that stability of your neck if you're not used to using your neck muscles as much. And what's that temperature of the water? 93.5 degrees, which is skin receptor neutral. So Very cool. So we keep the air, the water at 93.5, which is the same temperature as your skin. So after about five minutes, you forget where the water ends and where the air begins. Nice. Yes, that is, the, that is my experience. Ride in the cloud's edge. All right, and then we have these amazing pillows that I have discovered out here in Austin, Texas. What do you call Welcome to the Zen Den. <laughs> the Zen Den. <laughs> Very much so. I'll just, I'll just be here. He can. Uh, so these are Yogi. We still have to podcast. Yes, these are Yogi Bows, uh, made by a small company out of New Hampshire. They're basically giant bean bags with these like microfiber beads inside. It's like the closest thing I found on dry land to what it feels like when you're floating. So after float, it's really nice to come back here and drink some tea and nice. hit the coloring books or read about floats and other fun things. <laughs> Very nice. Yes. And then there's one other special oh, area. Oh my goodness. How can we forget about our ice baths? Looking extra industrial right now here in November, but <laughs> yeah, throw 300 pounds of ice in there typically on weekends and you got three of these gets it down to about 35 36 degrees which wow. is where you want to be and then have the outdoor pool filter filtering the water throughout oh, the day okay. so right on also keeps the water moving because some people you know like to get in there and not move and then the water immediately around your body gets warmed up right so it's kind of cheating a little oh, bit but when the water's the moving level. it's always cold oh my all right, so we're back here in the Zen Garden now, ready to get Zen Den. Zen Den. Sorry, it's it's kind of. A, it could be a garden. It's not a garden. <laughs> it could be a garden. <laughs> it's a Zen Garden to I'll me. I'll believe it. Just had a couple plants. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll bring plants next time. Perfect. Just so I can be right. Perfect. <laughs> All right, so we're here in the Zen Den, and we're gonna actually talk about this place and like more of the science behind floating um if you haven't had an opportunity to float i highly recommend it we're in austin texas i'm sure i'm going to mention that in the intro but um not everywhere has access to places like this and i met we met actually at the psychedelic science summit yeah last year that you sponsored yep. correct and so i was wondering if you could just start off by like i want them to get a little bit uh more behind your mission and what you're about and why you started this place in the first yeah place. absolutely well, let's just start it off there. Yeah. Um, do I look at you or do I look at the camera? Where are we, where are we one, going? Either one. You can look at this. That's them. That's the third person. Okay, perfect. <laughs> well, um, the Ocean Lab was born out of my, you know, quintessential quarter life crisis. Find yourself. What am I doing with my life? Um, I used to work at Salesforce and hated my life so much that I knew I had to get out and do something different, but I had no idea what that was going to look like. Um, but I was stressed, anxious, depressed, drinking three nights a week, and pretty much my whole social life revolved around, revolved around partying. Mm -hmm. And that's just like a really sad way to go through life, but I think it's, it's pretty common for a lot of the Midwest, and just mm -hmm. that's, what we're grow that's what we're raised on and what we grow up in. Um, but I knew there was more to life. And once I started traveling, um, it was kind of just like, all right, I gotta get out of Indiana. I can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. So I was fully nomadic for about a year and a half. Nice. Um, started planting some roots in Austin along the way and uh, about a year and a half into that nomadic journey I discovered floating. 
And what's crazy about floating is, you know, when you sort of set off on this quest, or when I set off on this quest to find meaning and purpose, it's like, all right, I'm going to go to all these places, I'm going to go to all these festivals, I'm going to do all these races. It was always more, 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 like just trying to add and add and add until I felt complete. And that's obviously a terrible approach and never works. But very common. But very common. Mm -hmm. But it turns out the answer the whole time was, was nothingness. Wow. And once I started floating, it was like this immediate switch in my brain from like crazy high strung type A. Wow overachiever, have to do everything, have to try everything. Krista once said that I have uh, the worst case of FOMO of anybody yeah. she's ever met. You know, like, wow. it's like I always felt like I had to be there and had to do everything. Oh, man. And then all of a sudden it was like nothingness. And that pried the door open to just be like, wait a second, what if like, what if all the answers were here the whole time? And I don't, I don't need this external validation. I don't need to be stressed about all these things I can't control. Wow. Right? Wow. So, you know, that's where I'm at now, four years into my floating journey, after four years of floating. But, you know, it was really that, that first couple floats was what just, you know, you were talking about moving our lives by like one degree to dramatically change the course. Mm -hmm. that, that first float was what did it. And it was just... In your busy mind and your busy soul, was that first float hard for you? Yes. Yeah. So hard. Yeah, that's what I experienced I, too. My first float, I actually got out early because I wow. like freaked out and was like, why am I paying some hippie to, to float in dirty bath water? Like this uh, just, right. this is stupid. I need we, to we usually go into ego, <laughs> like when we're, yes. when our ego's fighting hard, we go into these really intellectual, like I'm too good for this yeah. mode. Yeah, I found. like wow. this is this is too hippy dippy. This is uh -huh. too woo woo for me. I can't do it. Uh -huh. And like wow. me in early 2016, like had been to a couple yoga classes, but like never really meditated, never really known anything about mindfulness and yeah floating was just like the, yeah. the nuke that pried everything yeah that would be a nuke if you yeah. meditated and now you're yeah. not only meditating for an hour which is difficult for most people but you're in sensory deprivation too so all right. stimuli yeah is taken from you wow what about the second float i'm curious was it were, were you dreading it what got you to even do it again no i'm that? really like, stubborn and i bought a three pack uh -huh. and your overachieverness like, yes did you exactly <laughs> and like my girlfriend was you know raving about it and saying that yeah. she's having all these incredible breakthroughs and i'm yeah. like all right well i got to get one of those like i'm gonna i'm going for it wow your but fomo your fomo, the actually FOMO served you. exactly <laughs> yes like what am i missing out on i gotta try this wow um, and so by that third float you had changed your tune about it yeah and then it was like an obsession. I was, uh, you know, started floating out like once a week, and then it was every few days, and then wow. it was every other day, and then it was every day. And just like I think I'm onto something here. Wow. So this, so floating became like the most meaningful thing in your life. Honestly, yes. like it changed you completely. Completely. Which made you have that desire to bring that to others. Exactly. And getting out of your freaking crazy job that was bringing you misery and depression. Exactly. Wow. I mean, so the thinking four years ago was like the world's more stressed out anxious, addicted to technology, yep. and distracted yeah. than ever. And it's like, what has happened in the last four years? Like, all of those problems have just gotten exponentially worse. Yep, absolutely. And I can't even imagine for you, like, just being here. Um, I was here the other night, thank you, and I was just watching people come out. Like, it's got to be really rewarding for you every day to see people come out, like, in zen mode. Because we're oh, so used to seeing everybody you know, ramped up. I was talking to a girl in the lobby just before we started and she was saying how um, she noticed, she noticed while she was in there that she's, I'm always on the go. I never stop. I realized I never, ever, ever stop. And I was asking her, I'm like, yeah, don't you think it's crazy how we're, we're never stopping, but we're totally willing to drive ourselves into the ground in the gym for an hour. That's yeah. socially encouraged. You know, there's like a badge of honor that we get in society if we do more, go more, be more, achieve more mm -hmm. like that. It, we're all conditioned that way. You rattled that off quick. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I've thought about this a little. <laughs> um, but slowing down is, in cer certain ways, it's kind of looked down upon, which is really sad. Mm -hmm. You know, like it's like, oh, you're being lazy or you're doing this extra thing that doesn't matter. Like you being around this all day, like what, what would you say to people who are like, I don't have time for that. Well, to your point earlier about people coming out and you know looking completely different or feeling zen, like it's to the mm -hmm. point now where I don't feel like I've met somebody until after they floated mm. at least once. Wow. Because some of the shifts are that profound, wow. especially when people 
are of this mindset that like, why would I go pay money and drive to go do nothing? Like that is just so opposite to how society functions. Right. And to that, I would say like, you need to come do that because you haven't given yourself any time to just unwind in some cases in years. Yeah. And wow. that is just no way to go about life. I mean, there's, you can keep, brute forcing your way for a while but eventually you have to take a step back and analyze what's going on yeah and strategize your way out of it a little bit which you can't really do if you're still just stuck on the hamster wheel what's the longest float you've had six hours 15 minutes oh my gosh yeah and what was your what was that experience like so that was a, an attempt at an overnight float in uh, the cabin um we did not have the thermostat in the ocean lab set properly, so it like dropped in the middle of the night down oh, into no. like maintenance mode. So the water in the cabins got a little chilly, which yes. was one of the most miserable wake ups I've ever had. You wake up oh. you know, naked in a body of water, <laughs> shivering, just like, this is not good. Uh, so that was the, the first and last time we, we let the thermostat get that low oh, while people were floating. Um, but crawling out of that i mean it was it was definitely getting used to gravity again <laughs> where did you go do you go into like lucid dreaming when you're in there that long yeah i mean there's there's a lot of lucid dreaming that occurs uh floating naturally puts your brain into a theta wave brain state which is that really cool place we get to explore when you're like laying down on the couch for a nap and you don't quite fall asleep but then yep. you do but then you like snap out of it and also the place that we're in up until they say about seven or eight years old, which is crazy to think about. I have kids, so I always think about how crazy it is that they are in that dream state all the time, so yep. wide open. But if we if you look at that, you know, as an adult, I want that. I want to be that wide open to be able to make new patterns and new growth yep. and hyper learn. Well, and you know? see the world with childlike wonder. Yeah, exactly, you know? exactly. So, so you're putting yourself in that state when you go for like six hours or something like that, like. I mean, do you do you even remember a lot of that, or what what is that like? No, that's one of the the trickier problems I've found with extended floats is you have so many good ideas, but you like mm -hmm. don't want to get out and right. write them down, or you don't right. want to like look at a phone, you don't want to turn right. the light on. <laughs> so we're looking for some like waterproof tape recorders, or I guess there's even like these yeah. uh, dry erase boards you can have that are waterproof. Oh, that's a good idea. I don't know. Yeah. But. I mean, there's been several times where I will just like have this aha moment and get out and immediately write it down and you know, sometimes write for, for like pages. Wow. Yeah. I always say like when I'm deep in meditation and stuff comes, I'm like, it'll come back in the right moment. If some, if this is needed, it'll come back because it's right. all in there. <laughs> that is exactly. definitely, you know, I've, I've told you I've had crazy experiences in float tanks where stuff that I didn't think was in my brain anymore, I found out was in there mm -hmm. that I was able to remember, which is really cool. Um, what about infrared? Can we talk about infrared yeah, for a let's, second? Yeah, let's like, switch the sauna for a bit. Yeah, let's switch sauna. Like, what? why would somebody want to do Let's say they've never heard of infrared. Like, why would they be interested in doing that? Can you tell them? Yeah, absolutely. So, <laughs> let's, well, let's first let's start off with, with what infrared is relative to a, a traditional sauna. Because yeah. I think most people at some point in their life have, have seen a sauna or at least familiar with the concept. You know, this hot box, usually made of wood. You get in there sweat. and you sweat because it's hot. Right. right? Uh, infrared saunas have come along in the last 20, 30 years, but especially with, with sunlight and clear light the last 10. Uh, it's just a much more gentle way to sweat. When you get in an infrared sauna, the, the ambient temperature isn't quite as warm because it doesn't need to be. A traditional sauna, you're dependent upon the, the air in there being crazy hot, mm -hmm. which makes you sweat the same way your body would if you went to the desert. Right. Uh, with an infrared sauna, the temperature usually sits at like 130 to 140 degrees instead of 200 for traditional. Okay. And because the ambient temperature is not as hot, your body doesn't have this like panic, freak out response. And the infrared light coming off of the panels that line the inside of an infrared sauna, then warm your body up from the inside out the same way the sun does when you're laying outside on a nice sunny day. Very cool. So it's yeah. a much more pleasant way to introduce a sweat response in your body and get some, some mild heat stress going. Yeah, nice. And then the sunlight ones, they have other color spectrums or what's the difference? Or no, are they so some, infrared? So most infrared panels you'll see will just be far infrared or just uh -huh. near infrared. Uh, sunlight and, and clear light and a couple other manufacturers make what's called full spectrum panels where they okay. hit all three different bands of wavelength. Gotcha. So the near infrared is gonna be um, a lot of like skin repair, cosmetic sorts of things. Um, you're obviously very familiar with juve lights. Mm -hmm. The juve is a mix of like extreme red light and then near infrared. So 
think like skin abrasions and the glowing flush you get out of a sauna. That's, that's the near infrared. The mid penetrates a little deeper and now you're starting to get more into uh, anti-inflammatory benefits and detoxifying all the way down to the far infrared, which then goes the deepest. And that's where you're really pulling out like the toxins and the gunk that have accumulated Yay. in your cells. Yay, all so things. It's okay, a nice cool. triple threat approach to yeah. sauna. So, so you get pretty on the outside and the inside. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Okay, cool. And then real quick, just so we make sure we cover our bases, <laughs> you know, ice baths, like most people just think like, oh, if you get injured, you know, you see a football player come off field and he gets an ice bath. So can you right. go into why you have ice baths here and why people might be interested in doing something so horribly wonderful? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you guys have... Horribly, horribly wonder. I like horribly horrible, wonderful. I like you know, that. Well, you have like fresh water pumping through just to make sure that oh, yeah. you don't heat it up a little bit. Like that's next level. Oh yeah. That's awesome. So yeah, what's the deal with ice baths? Why would somebody want to do that? Yeah, ice baths are an interesting one because the physical benefits, you can read 15 different studies and get 15 different answers as to what they actually do. Like there's still a lot of pseudoscience out there. There's some really good science as well, but like some athletic trainers, for example, swear by no ice. Like don't ever do it. It's too aggressive of an inflammatory response. Mm -hmm. You know, for us, we're not really dealing with like Olympic athletes here at the Ocean Lab. We're mostly dealing with people that, you know, will have lingering soreness in their body or, or tension that they're holding somewhere or just, you know, had a really hard workout and they want to come decompress real quick. So ice baths, obviously you're dropping your body's te core temperature down quite a bit, which, um, will help dull some of the inflammation in your body. Uh, there's also this wonderful blast of endorphins that happens over the course of, say, a three-minute ice bath. Um, the norepinephrine blast at the three-minute mark is especially wonderful for getting this like whole body euphoria. What just happened? Uh, three minutes is about how long you were saying that it takes before you really get norepinephrine release. I was saying, I feel like it's three seconds. <laughs> Like, are you sure about that? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of things occurring <laughs> in your body over the course of that three minutes. And that's, personally, that's what I love about ice baths or cold showers is controlling your stress response. Yes. Being able to breathe through and recognize on a very physical, somatic level that you have the power to control your stress response. Exactly. Which then goes into everything else you're doing in life. It's cool. like... I can breathe through this, like exactly. I got this. And you, something happens in you, right? And you turn into this beast, this animal that's mm -hmm. like, I like it, bring it, <laughs> I don't mind. Bring all the storm, you know? Exactly. It, it kind of changes you as a person. Well, and that's the benefit of it. Like, we can <laughs> yeah. go into the science and hormones and all this right. and that, but like at the end of the day, the most powerful thing we see is right. that you can take someone who's like deathly afraid of the cold, yeah. have them just take a deep breath, okay, breathe through it, you know, and just get in there for 30 seconds, a minute, three minutes in the best case scenario. But over the course of that, like you watch them almost develop these like mm -hmm. coping mechanisms where it's mm -hmm. like, okay, my body's telling me to panic. Mm -hmm. but I'm going to stay calm. I'm going to breathe. I can, I, okay, this is just my, you know, biological, this, this evolved out thousands of years ago, but this is a survival instinct. Like, yeah. I know there's a sauna right there, so I can tough this out. Totally. And then once you get past that first minute, it's like, oh, okay. Right. And it, Here like, we go. It teaches you that your body is capable of so much more too than you thought it was. You're like, oh, okay. I've kind of been chickening out here thinking I can't mm -hmm. do physical things that I actually can do. Yep. So yeah, it's super beneficial that way. Okay, so I, I found out this past weekend that you are an Ironman athlete. So yes. you will understand this. My mom was a big time runner growing up and she was like a pioneer in the women's running movement. Yeah. So she had these amazing coaches. And so when I was a little girl, she was teaching me how to run for real. And I'm always amazed at this as I look now to see how much this is like a thing in health now. But the very first thing she taught me before anything else, before form, before any kind of terminology, how to use my arms, how to hang my hands up, she taught me breath. Wow which is crazy back in like, you know, 1992, yeah. I'm learning breath as right. a little girl. And I'm just like amazed by that. But I see that now because I don't know about you, but when I'm go kicking it into high gear, like when you're like in freaking go mode, mm -hmm. like this is the end of the race, I'm leaving it all on the table here. To me, that's when breath is the most yep. important. Cause I know that if I don't oxygenate my body and if I get out of a pattern, I'm, it's all going to hell. Like mm -hmm. I'm all, it's, I'm falling apart, right? So. Yeah. 
I love that when you're in these situations, you're forced to be able, you're forced to learn how to use breath to calm yourself. Yes. Which translates over into physical performance as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. So, and yeah. what's crazy is like, it's obviously evolutionary or it's like something in us as a species because yeah. we've had to do it before. Right. How else do people just show up and on like their first try innately figure out like, oh, I can calm myself down. I can regulate my stress response. Uh-huh. This is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, and how about in the float tank? It's kind of the same way with your breathing. Exactly. And even your own heartbeat. I, that really like took me by surprise. I was like, I am meditating and being lulled into a deep trance state by my own breath and mm-hmm. heartbeat. And I mean, there's you want to talk connection to self and yep. healing and feeling alive versus going to parties and yep. doing all these extreme sports and doing all these things. Like it's crazy how much you can find that in the quietness of your own breath and your own freaking heartbeat. Absolutely. In the water. And that's the thing you're getting out of your head and into your body, right? Like yeah. that is what we are all about here. So the ice bath is like the the cheat code, blunt force shortcut. Like your brain is no longer a thing anymore. Like you are just acutely aware of your body and right in this moment at this moment in time and so focused on the now yeah you know sauna is like the 30 40 minute version because towards the end of that sauna session you're same thing like it's really hot in here like breathe through it i can make it and then when you drift off to the float it's just like oh i can just breathe my way into this and okay all right yeah so so yeah kind of what i'm hearing from you is putting yourself in some uncomfortable extremes mm-hmm. is what's happening here and they're they're quiet and they're still you know we, we a lot of us i think are more comfortable like climbing the mountain and it's so hard but i got it but i bet for most people like it's even hard it's harder when you're in the sauna and you're hitting that panic moment and you know that you can get out yep whenever you want yet you choose to stay a little longer and then you find out you were fine mm-hmm. on the other side there's something super empowering about absolutely. that absolutely have you witnessed in people's lives that come here regularly, like patterns? Have they talked to you about lessons they've learned or like empowerment that they've received or like, what is it? What do you feel like it does for people when they come here on the regular? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's such a wide variety yeah. of people that we have coming in and out of here. Yeah. Um, like our, our diehard floater crowd tends to skew to the entrepreneur types. Mm. Um, so, you know, these are guys and a couple girls, but mostly guys who run companies. They're making lots of decisions all day, high stress situations. Yeah. Um, so being able to find peace in those moments and right. being able to have the breakthroughs they have on the creative front wow. in the float has been super powerful. Very cool. Um, the sauna side of our business is, is more female and that's more of the, um, to your point about like pushing past a little harder every day, uh, you know, starts off doing a 30 minute sauna, then it's 45, mm-hmm. then it's 60, and wow. then it starts being more active, losing weight. Like, yeah. so that's been really beautiful to see. That's um, cool, digging into their physical potential. Absolutely. But I mean, over the course of the last seven months, the biggest thing this place has been is just like a, a place for people to go that isn't their house or their apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, COVID has, has been interesting for sure but having this place be somewhere where people can go and have normal conversations and mm-hmm. you know forget about the outside world for a little bit mm-hmm. has been incredibly rewarding yeah you've really created a sacred space like that because when you come in i've sat in your lobby for a little while now twice and i've seen that it it's i think because like you said like the real side of people is coming out because i see them come out and they're so chill and calm like when they talk to me like i'm like they're like really making eye contact (laughs) you know and they're like really connecting and they're like really interested because all of the busyness is gone there's no there's no browser tabs running in the background right exactly (laughs) great way of putting it they're like fully in the conversation with me and it's really cool to see that facilitated you know you've got your music going they've got their tea you've got your nice big cozy couches, but it's also this space that people have entered. I'm like, man, if we could all be in that space a little bit more, imagine how much more calm and connection we could have all the time. So really, really cool what you created. And I, if you guys come to Austin, you have to come here. Cause I like, I didn't know it was this cool. I was (laughs) like, oh my gosh, this place is freaking gorgeous. So yeah, make sure you guys check it out. Um, Is there anything, anything else that you'd like to add before we close things up? 
Not really. Okay, all right. This is uh, this has been great. It's so great having you here finally. Yeah, thank you. And it's Ocean. Do you have a website or social media where people can? Yeah, OceanLabATX.com is our okay. website, and then we're OceanLabATX pretty much everywhere. Okay, so. OceanLabATX. This is Eric, his girlfriend Krista. They are amazing. So. This um, is Tara. She's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> if you guys get to come out, hopefully you get to meet them. But again, thank you so much, Eric, for You're inviting so us in, showing us the space, and sharing some time with us. Absolutely.